mic at this distance. This is the camera mic at this distance. This is low at the farthest possible distance at this point. This is low. <laughs> Craig Kielberger was only 12. He decided to take a seven-week trip to South Asia. It was a journey that would have important consequences for the rest of his life. He went with 25-year-old Alam Rahman, his friend and guide. They took a camcorder and made a record of all their experiences to bring back to Canada to show other children. Craig is 15 now. This is the story of his life so far. The only time I was actually nervous on my trip was that one second when I said, oh God, what am I doing here? I'm 12 years old and I've never taken the subway by myself. But after that, I loved it. Craig had become concerned about child labor through reading about it back in Canada. Now he wanted to find out everything he could firsthand. I had a million questions. I could have held a child there for hours and just asked them question after question after question. I, I wanted to know what it was like working in the conditions, how they felt having to get up each morning and knowing that this was what they were going to do, what their dreams were for the future. I wanted to put myself in their life for a day and to learn exactly what went through their brain, and exactly what they thought, and exactly what they hoped, and exactly what they feared. What is your name? that she was sorting through. What are they used for? Use. Uh, they didn't collect the plastics, only they didn't collect this plastic. What, what are the needles used for before? What were they used for? In the hospitals, hospital, maybe from the drug addiction. Is, is she ever worried about the spread of viruses like AIDS? Because she said she had cut herself before and cut herself. Yeah, she will just wash it. Just to wash it, that's all. In the water. She okay. won't get any treatment for that. She will just wash it. She won't get any treatment. Today, I would like to talk to you about a problem that many of us have. Baby brothers. One day, I made a big mistake. I asked my mom and dad for a baby brother. Wow. Too bad we don't have Craig sleeping. Yeah. It would make a nice family picture. My parents were both teachers, so as soon as they could, they shipped me off to school. I used to go part-time. And uh, the rest of the day, I would do things like watch my favorite TV show at that point, which was Mr. Dress Up. I had the largest collection of comics I think possible. Actually, I didn't have a comic hero, to tell you the truth. When I was growing up, I think the only hero which I really had was my older brother. that it really hit me how different my life was compared to the lives of these children was the brick kiln. The children here told Craig how they had been leased by their poverty-stricken parents as collateral. What would the children have as to do bonded to laborers working to repay the loans, they are forced to live here, earning a pittance. The bosses add the cost of food and board 
so the debt is never repaid, but passed on from parent to child. Can you ask him his age? How old is he? How old is he? How old is he? Fourteen years. Was he born on the compound in the brick kiln? Yes, there, from the beginning. Yes. Has he ever gone to school? Did he go to school? No. Did he go to school? No. No, yet. No. The children in the brick kiln were the children who I think moved me the most. These children knew, the children as young as five, six, and seven years old knew that for the rest of their lives, they'd be working here in the brick kiln, that they knew that generation to generation this debt would be carried, that even to the day which they died, they would live and they would work on this brick kiln. Did you work a day? 12 hours a day. I couldn't promise him that I would put him in my suitcase and take him back to Canada. I couldn't promise him a better life. But the one thing that I can promise the children who I meet with is that I will take their stories and I will tell them to anyone who's willing to listen. He does not know what a school is at all. Has he ever been off the brick kiln? He's never been outside. He's never been outside. When I was five years old, not only did I have no idea that children my age didn't go to school, Is that your new suit? I had no idea that there was a, a world outside my neighborhood. At that age, you assume everyone is exactly the same as you are. There are people who live in another city. What's it like? You know, it must be strange. Never mind in another country halfway around the world. Kira Satyarti is the chairman of the South Asian Coalition on Child Servitude, SACS. One of SACS' roles is to organize raids to free children from bondage. Often children are working in factories under almost inhumane conditions that rival those of slavery. We have guaranteed free and compulsory primary education for all the children up to the age of 14. We have also guaranteed that no child up to the age of 14 would be engaged in any sort of hazardous work. Kene ko tum dunia ka sabse bada ganatantra hai. Saare paanch karol bachche aaj gulami ki zindagi ki jee rahe hai. Very few people are willing to conduct raids on these factories because the carpet mafia is notorious for its violence. Two of Kirish's colleagues have been killed while conducting raids on factories. I was not able to attend the raid because I was white and therefore I would draw too much attention to the crowd. Many of the children had been held as virtual slaves away from their families, friends, and childhood. Many of the children had been given by their parents, used as collateral for loans. Others had never even received a penny for their labor. Oh, it's very unfortunate that you were not there. But uh, it was a very successful day. We have been able to liberate 19 children. So how many did you expect for them? 
something like that. <laughs> so what's the master plan now? The children have been freed and we want to reunite them with the parents. Brother but the home, village is quite yeah. far away. Hopefully tomorrow we will see the reunion of the mothers with their children. My brother Mark is the reason why I got involved, and you know, I'm very lucky to have him. But when he was younger, he was involved in environmental issues, and I still remember when I was eight years old going to a school with him, and he'd give me the petition, he'd explain it all to me, and I'd have to repeat what he said. He was the first one that opened my eyes to human rights issues. Kailash rescued were going home. They seemed traumatized and anxious to be reunited with their families who they hadn't seen for three years. Families who had been tricked into sending their children into bondage. They described the abuse they faced, how when they made a simple error, they would be humiliated and beaten. Of course, he is suffering from malnutrition and uh, most of these children suffer from lung diseases because of continuous inhaling of bull and uh, dust. When we went to rescue these children yesterday, we found that uh, the entire uh, place was full of bull and dust. There was no proper ventilation. It was extremely unhygienic to the children. There was no even proper lighting. But these children have to work since morning till late evening. And they were given only just one uh, square meal a day. In the train ride back to the village. Some train. That <laughs> the drive back to the village. We were supposed to take a train that didn't work out. village it was already dark yeah. so now we are in the village of Ramavta these are the villages which don't have any light no electricity at all many of them have never seen a tube light or a bulb in their life there's no question of telephone most of them have no idea of telephones most of them have never been to any hospital there is no hospital there is no approach route there is nothing even though it was sad saying goodbye to Munilao, a new friend, I was happy to again see him with his parents and his siblings and in the embrace of his mother. Through their desperate poverty, they had been forced to send him into a life of slavery, but I knew now they would never again make that mistake. He says that it was very bad and I saw my mother in dreams and uh, she also said the same thing that I saw you in dream. Seeing children freed from bondage was very important for Craig. 
His reason for coming to India in the first place had been reading an article in a Toronto newspaper about the murder of another freed carpet worker who had been speaking out. Iqbal Masih was 12 when he was killed, the same age as Craig. A young boy from Pakistan named Iqbal Masih told the world how at the age of four, he was sold into slavery for less than $16. Inspired by Iqbal Masih, Craig had started speaking out about child labor even before he went to India. With a group of friends, he founded an organization called Free the Children. It is a youth group dedicated to the elimination of child labor and the exploitation of children. You may be thinking, well, you're only 12 years old. This is a big problem. What can you do to help? First, I would like to say being 12 years old is no excuse. No one has a good enough excuse for ignoring these child workers' problems. We also have a fundraising campaign in which we are trying to raise $10,000 for these children. Who will help the children if we don't? Thank you very much. The board has just voted and will offer, will donate $5,000 to your cause right off the top. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much. Harry, you'll give him a match of $5,000 if the Fed is better. <laughs> a little shocked is an understatement there. I honestly thought that I was going to faint. I, I'm not joking. I honestly did. Let's let the bidding begin. I wonder if any of the children that were, we dropped off uh, a couple of days ago have arrived here yet. After they've met their families again, the rescued bonded laborers come here for up to six months of vocational training and psychological counseling. The training gives them a chance at a future. So, he is that unfortunate boy who has been branded with red hot iron rods by his master on 1st of November's night because he helped freeing his younger brother and um, another friend of him. He was caught. His hands and legs were bound with rope and uh, branded with red hot iron rods several places. That you can see also in the neck. He was in such a severe trauma, he was not speaking a single word, not crying, not smiling, no emotions, no feelings. But only after three weeks of continuous psychotherapy, he was able to speak. What was his first word? Uh, first, first word, percent. he started, somebody, somebody saw that he is singing a song, sitting, sitting there in the middle of it. Could he sing the song? Yeah. Yeah? Gana gana tum jara? Gana gana. jo tum gaate ho. Jeena hai. Jeena hai to has ke jiyo jiyo nana. If you wanted to live, live with a smile, live with love, don't cry. Don't shed your tears. There are storms. There are uh, disasters in the life. There are ups and downs. But don't shed your tears. Smile. Amid the splendor of the presidential palace, John Kretchen was officially welcomed to India, and he quickly stepped on the... Foreign business is attracted by cheap labor. Craig wanted to take Canadian Prime Minister Jean Chrétien to the street to talk to a child who has to work to survive. But the Prime Minister's office said he was too busy with important meetings. So Craig decided to hold his own press conference. 
Well, I thought that child labor is more of hidden off in the dark factories, and the police just basically didn't have um, the will, the political will wasn't there to go seek out and rescue the children. But, for example, in Nepal, I found that basically it's quite openly practiced, as in when I was going to see one of the NGO schools, uh, just driving down the street, you could see the children working as the street vendors. You could see the children breaking bricks by the side of the road. You could see the children working as tempo helpers, which is actually a type of taxi. The children hang on to the back uh, to collect the money from the people and often fall off and get run over. This is all preparing for an interview on this show called Politics and the other interviews that will be coming up. and. We were just typing up for the press conference, and this is going to be an all-nighter. OK. By the way, that means yes. And they're shaking their head like that. No. <laughs> yeah, like, like this, right? So like this? Yeah, OK. That means yes, that means no, and that means OK. OK, How, what does this mean? This means yes. So what else? Tell what else can the youth of Canada and the youth of India do together to improve the conditions to end child labor, to end the exploitation of children? What else? What do we want our governments to do? What do we want the businesses to do? What do we want ourselves to do? What do you want to do? I call for the total boycott of buying goods made by child labor, like carpets, garments, etc. I also appeal to you to look for Ragmark's label, which guarantees that our adult labor is employed in making these carpets. I also urge the Prime Minister of India to seriously look into child labor problems and use his good offices for total elimination of child labor. The worst type of child servitude is bondage. When a child is sold into slavery, the child is shackled and chained in many cases, cannot see his parents, and is forced to work long hours in unsafe working conditions for little or no pay. Craig, if I can just ask a question, obviously it's a cause that no one can question, but are you certain you're not being exploited by adults in any way because you run this campaign? Actually, I'm the founder of the organization Free the Children, so I've done it totally on my own will, and it's a completely youth-run organization. So there are no other adults who have political means behind the lines trying to press us. So what do you want him to say to uh, Prime Minister Rao basically, tonight? Basically, I want him at least to raise the issue. Forget being the Prime Minister for a second. Just simply as a Canadian, it's his moral responsibility to be, do this. Uh, you tried to reach the Prime Minister uh, yes. to meet him? Uh... I have faxed and written to the Prime Minister requesting to meet with him Unfortunately, he said his schedule was too booked and he did not have time to meet with me. We had just finished our meeting with the PM. Yeah. Uh, I got out most of my points. He says, well, it's a very complex issue and things like this take time and well, we donate to the uh, IPEC and we do quite a bit and we do this and that we do that, um, which Canada does and I'm very happy that it does that, but there's still much more that Canada has to do. Stage the Prime Minister during Team Canada's trade trip and catapulted the issue of child labor onto the national agenda. Well, today, 13-year-old Craig Kielberger came back to Canada saying his fight is far from over. Craig Kielberger arrived back home after his five... But I stepped out of his doors and I saw not only my friends and family waiting for me, but also the press. In a sad sort of way, it dawned on me that so often the press thought that young people weren't capable of doing these type of things and i think that being young did give us an advantage tour of south asia he went with one objective and even he is surprised by his success well there is no question to ask that uh, one of the reasons why the media was obviously interested in free the children was because it was children helping children and 
you know, to them this was a phenomenon. This was strange that children would care enough to get involved. And they didn't realize that, you know, children actually deep down inside wanted to help and wanted to participate. There's a reason Craig Kielberger is trying to find his way through the corridors of Congress. In a spite to shut down third world sweatshops full of child labor, these are the corridors of U.S. power. You have the power in your words, in your actions, and in your policy making. There was never a single point a where it dawned on me. The press was an important Congress. tool. I think it was something that we began to realize as Free the How Children evolved you? from simply being a reggaeton group in Toronto to a group of young people around the world. He's been essential. I mean, there have been a lot of adults who were also well-informed and who've gone and seen things firsthand or whatever, uh, and they've not been able to uh, draw the uh, uh, the attention and appeal that, 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 that he has. Now, Kilberger is helping set up American chapters of his organization, working to establish labels for products not made by child labor. It's a very, very powerful uh, vehicle that you're, uh, that you're creating here uh, if, in fact, you can, you can move children uh, in this direction to take action. The youth group Free the Children says the Canadian government is undecided about whether to endorse the rug mark label, which ensures through factory inspections that child labor is not used in imported carpets. So today, they held a press conference to introduce the label to Canada themselves. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Zachary, and I'm Daniel, in Jim Mills Public School. Today, we'd like to inform you about what Rugmark is. Rugmark is an internationally recognized trademark that is out to make people aware of which rugs are made with child labor. In the long run, it is also out to eliminate child labor altogether. Whenever you buy a carpet, you're also making a symbol. You're making a symbol that you do not want children to be exploited, that you care about the children of the world and you're willing to stand up and ensure that they have their rights. We're kids. We don't have voting rights. We have very little rights. We're doing something that the adults should be doing to begin with. Yeah, so they should just think about this. Hey, they're kids. They can't vote. They can't do, do half the things that they, they can, but yet they still are putting in this effort to end a horrible thing. Why can't the adults do that with all the rights they have? They're not using them the right way. Yeah, you know, you can take Craig as an example. Yeah. He is only like 13, 14 years old, and look what he's done. It's crossed the line. Cutting a meter of sugarcane, they receive only one cent. So hopefully, eventually, in the world, we'll see children who do not work. But at this point, they have to work to help their family, in many cases, survive. Child labor and child abuse cannot be tolerated. If it's crossed that line, if it's become exploitation, and if it's become abuse, it must be stopped. In 1990, leaders from around the world gathered together and they drew up the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, which lists the most basic rights of children, including the right to an education, the right to be protected from abuse and exploitation, the right to be treated with dignity. Seven years have passed and yet this child abuse still continues. These children have little faith in politicians and fancy laws and conventions drawn up on their behalf. As children, we simply do not want to be the passive recipients of kindness. 
Now, sometimes with media, I do get a bit frustrated. And sometimes I would just like to kind of go off and do my own thing and just meet the kids. So then, have any of their friends ever been seriously hurt by the police or even killed? <laughs> But I do realize that, you know, for every speech that I give, I can reach 100, 200, 1,000 people. But through the media, we can reach enormous numbers of people. They were shot or something by the police, does you think, or by who? The first concrete result we had was working with the law you mentioned. Sex tourism. This law was passed in Canada and 11 other countries. But here in Italy, this law does not exist. And when I met with various senators, this is one of the points that I wanted to bring up to try to bring it here also. Okay, okay, what do the Italian senators have to say? They will definitely look into it. And I hope that means that when they look into it, they will definitely ensure that it comes to be. <laughs> change was coming about, or if I was not doing this for a good issue, would I continue to do this? No. I am doing this for an issue which I love, and I am doing this for an issue which I care strongly about, and that's the reason why I do it. That's what makes it all worthwhile. As long as the media present the facts truthfully, as long as they act responsibly, then, then I think the media is doing a wonderful job and they will present the issue and that will challenge people to take action. How much are you paid per day on average working here? What's it going to be We at Free the Children are receiving thousands of letters from children around the world saying, tell me what I can do to get involved. I want to help to change the world. What we have to do is take that money, invest it in education, invest it in job training skills to help these street children. Okay, everybody knows that, but nobody does do nothing here in Brazil. Well, it's, it's a question of taking steps. Meeting these children, I learned from that. You know, that's, that's their gift to me. And then in turn, going to the media and taking their voice and, and, and repeating what they say, acting as a funnel for what they say. That's my gift to them. I want to be able to give them something. And I, I can't always promise them that we'll create a project in their neighborhood. I can't always promise them that their government will bring about a change, but at least it's a little thing which I can do. Over the past two years, I've had the opportunity to meet children who work in exploitative and abusive conditions. How can these children grow up to be peaceful when all they've ever known is violence? There is a possibility to change this. Society must see, accept this part of our society and must bring into society with sense of caring. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have a quick photo, Your Holiness? Thank you, sir. I think some adults are threatened by people like Craig. Let's get our plan ready for today. And while you do that, I'll read announcements. Students Craig has brought to light an issue that society in general has chosen to sweep under the rug. Studies. 
For some people, when they're involved in, a, in an indirect way, like some of the major manufacturers and other interested groups, it's embarrassing for them, and, and I guess they'd rather not have somebody like Craig expose some of the things that, uh, that have been going on. I sometimes feel a bit sorry for Craig because he has many things going on at the same time. He does a wonderful job of balancing all of them, but there are so many things going on. <laughs> It's a normal household, but at the same time, not every household has 50 young people running through it for a barbecue and preparing for a conference dealing with the elimination of child labor. So it's the normal household where you have the fun, the, the studying for homework, the young people coming for pizza parties. At the same time, you have the other side of it, where it's, it's an office. It's where pretty the children is run. So, you know, it's, it's a whole family effort. And because of that, everyone loves what they do. And everyone believes in what they're doing. Good morning for the children. Laura, how are you? It's Mark Kilberger speaking. I'm Fred Craig's dad. And at the moment, I'm providing moral support. I pick up, I help out, I do whatever has to be done. I guess that's essentially it. You know, we can be very cynical and think that the world is a mess. But on the other hand, young people who have that idealism and who are not cynical as we, we tend to become in life, they then can rally their peers, their people of their own age, to take a hand then in, in, in trying to change the world for the better. people out there who simply look at Free the Children and say, oh, it's a phase, it won't do anything. You know, it's just a bunch of young people. They'll, they'll change and move on to a next phase in a matter of a few weeks. And the funny thing is, you know, two years later, we're stronger than ever. <laughs> Last week, we got over 500 letters from the United States alone. Never mind, you know, those letters from Poland and Chile and Hong Kong and Singapore. How did you get started in it? Well, I knew about it from my older sister who was in it the year before I started. And when I, my school, they started it and they asked who would like to be a part of it. Craig came and he spoke just to our class. It was more of like a discussion almost. And everybody, like, everybody really liked what he was saying, but nobody wanted to give up their time to do it. I think it's been really hard to do like fundraising and things. You think like each thing will take you a day, so you plan many things, but in actual fact, they take like a week to plan, and yeah. then you want to keep it going. Yeah, and you've had bake sales that have gone on, and those have really helped because people will just volunteer and bring in baked goods and then those will sell really quickly. He had, if you brought in a buck, you could get a free jeans day, and we raised like $2,000 doing that. We've been pressuring the government like yeah. this into the same category. And of course we are children, and we don't have all the answers, and we're trying to learn. And what would be some ideas? And the only way that we can gain credibility is if we know the issue inside out. Right. right. If we look into our own lives and we ask the hard questions, look at our country's policies, you know, are trading policies fair? Why are these multinational corporations going into developing countries and paying wages that these people can't even survive on? They have to send their children out to labor. Why does the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, bodies which are controlled by the rich countries, force industrializing and poor countries to cut their social services to the absolute bone and to cut money away from the education and health care of children?
in the garbage dump. What we saw, there were children who were spending their entire life rummaging through literally mountains of trash and searching through the, the, the scrap metal and the garbage and the medical waste and the food. And, and they're searching, you know, for their livelihood. It always does affect you. In some cases, it affects you in different ways. In some cases, it angers you. It makes you want to go to the top of a roof and, and shout. And that's with everybody here working? In some cases, it just makes you want to break down. Because you can become as angry as you want to be. You can become as frustrated as you want to be. And you can cry until you can't cry any longer. But you know what? won't change the situation. And how much does he make at the end of the day when he's sold everything that he's arranged? How much do you make, Jeffrey? They do not want to be seen as oh, the little creatures who need help. They don't want more pity. You took time out of their life, and you have to give them something in return. The only gift which you can give them in return is taking action in your own way and going back to Canada, in my case, going back and bringing it back to free the children and challenging all the members to work harder, or whether it be taking action in a different way. Have you ever been off the garbage dump? Have you ever left the area, the compound? Nakalabas ka na ba raw dito sa ano? Sa basura na to? Nakalabas ka na? Nakalits ka na rito? Nakapasyal ka na sa ibang lugar? Huh? Not yet. Not yet? Does he ever hope to leave this compound? Gusto mo ba minsan eh, sa minsan eh, maalis ka rito? Maiba yung buhay mo? No. You know, I've traveled in many countries around the world. I've had the opportunity to meet with hundreds uh, of children who work on the streets, or who work in the brick kilns, or who work in the sugar cane fields, or who work in the garbage dumps. And, you know, no matter how much I try, no matter how many hours I spend with them, and no matter how many times I go back to the homes, or ask them about their life, or about, ask them about their family, I, I never really will understand their reality. but I can at least try. There is a big need out there. And you know, we're not only talking about help with money or more projects, because a lot of these children, you know, no matter how much they search, you know, they'll be able to find their food, the minimum amount to be able to survive. But what they cannot find through all their searching there, through all their scavenging, is they can't find love in a lot of cases.